All right, so today I want to answer the question, do ball python bites hurt, and what does it feel like to get bit from a ball python? And I know a lot of people coming into the hobby, they're looking at a lot of videos online, a lot of information, they're looking at all the different genes in ball pythons. There's hundreds of genes in ball pythons, and potentially those genes could make millions of different combinations using those genes. It's a pretty awesome project to get into, and I'd say pretty much the number one thing that keeps a lot of people from getting into ball pythons is the thought of getting bit by a snake <laughs> you know a lot of people think hey does it really hurt when I get bit from a ball python and I've been breeding ball pythons for about six years now I produce hundreds of hatchlings here in my collection and I've been bitten maybe 50 probably a lot more than 50 times here in my ball python reptile room and sometimes it hurts a lot and sometimes I'd say most of the times it really doesn't hurt that much now what I actually did is I put together a list of 10 topics 10 bullet points, things you can, should consider, especially if you're new getting into the hobby, as far as the ball python bite and how much it hurts and what can affect the pain level of those bites. And the number one thing I have on my list, if you're just starting out, you'll probably experience this, you will most likely feel more panic and fear than you'll feel from the pain of the bite. And I've actually noticed this when I first started in ball pythons, especially if you're not used to being around snakes and if you're not used to being bitten from a snake or snakes biting at you. Sometimes, you know, when I first started out in ball pythons, I can actually open up one of these tubs behind me with a snake in there. And if the snake actually came out, even even if it didn't contact my skin with the teeth, if it would just take a bite at me in the air and just kind of snap at me, it seemed like that would kind of instigate a fear response where I just have a quick flash of a little bit of fear from a snake snapping at me. And let me tell you, it probably took a couple years to get over that to where now if a snake bites at me, as, as long as it's not like a really big reticulated python that could do a lot of damage. Usually with these ball pythons, when they take a bite, there's absolutely no fear, no pain panic at all where when I first started it was it didn't matter you know if that snake bit me you know kind of contacted me just a little bit even on the tip of my finger let me tell you the fear factor seemed like it was always more than the pain of the bite itself so that's one thing to keep in mind all right, so number two, it depends on the size of the snakes. So if you actually have a really big ball python that bites you, it could be a lot more painful than a really small hatchling. And I'd say probably 90, 95% of the bites that I've taken from my ball pythons here in my reptile room have all been hatchlings. And the hatchlings are kind of interesting because when they first hatch out of the egg, they're really completely mellow. They absolutely will not bite anything when they first come out of the egg. And you almost have have to kind of coax them into taking the first rodents. As a matter of fact, when you're starting out with ball python hatchlings, usually you have to start with a live mouse hopper for the first few meals to get them to eat, to kind of get them going as far as the feeding process. And then after that, it seems like after about eight or nine or 10 meals, they go ballistic. Well, they'll actually just <laughs> eat anything that you put in the tub. And that is usually when you get bit. Usually when they're about, I'd say about 150 grams, all the way up to maybe about 400, 500 grams, something like that. When they get a little bit of weight on them, they'll absolutely eat anything and snap at anything that comes in the tub. That is usually when you'll get bit. And then it seems like after that, they kind of mellow out and they, they figure out the difference between people and the food and they tend not to bite as much after that. All right, so number three, it depends on the type of bite. So you actually have a couple different types of bite. You have the defensive bite, which is kind of like a snap. Sometimes like if a ball python is really agitated and you come in with your hand and it kind of snaps at you, what it'll actually do is it's almost like a little pin prick. It feels like someone took a pin and just kind of popped you right in the finger as far as the defensive bite. And the other one is the feeding bite. And the feeding bites are definitely the most painful bites and that is when the, the ball python a lot of times it'll actually latch onto you and hold onto you sometimes in severe cases you'll actually have a ball python grab you and then wrap its whole body around your arm I've actually had that that was one of my most painful bites and usually that only happens on feeding day when you're going through and feeding and they accidentally miss the rat and they get you instead of the rat you can actually use gloves to feed or you can use tongs or something like that to pretty much eliminate the, the feeding 
eating bites in most cases, but you know what I do is it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> I actually just use my bare hands with the ball pythons and I don't really worry about it that much. The feeding bites are pretty rare as far as getting a bite. All right, so number four, it depends on where you get bit. So if you actually get bit, like on the tip of the finger, it doesn't seem like it's as painful as if you get caught like between your, pretty much the most painful bite that I've had was a feeding bite between my thumb and my first finger, right in the web of my hand. Grabbed on there really super hard. That was a really painful bite right in the middle. But I'd say most of the times, they'll actually bite you like on the finger or something like that, which is not that painful. All right, so number five, it depends on your tolerance to pain. I know some people have different pain levels. I think some people are a little bit more thicker skinned than other people. Maybe some people don't have as much sensation in their hands. So for example, if you actually do something like repetitive with your hands, sometimes you can get a little bit of tingling or lose some sensations in your hands. Or if you actually get bit by a snake, you know, you might not feel it as much as someone else who is a lot more sensitive to the pain in their hands. So that's one thing to keep in mind. All right, so number six, one thing to, especially to keep this in mind that the ball pythons are a lot less likely to bite than other species of snakes. And I think that's why ball pythons are the number one most popular pet snake as far as just the sheer numbers of ball pythons. And that's because ball pythons, uh, the, well, it's kind of a double-edged sword because they really don't bite as much as other snakes. But on the flip side, I'd say ball pythons are a lot picky as far as feeding you know sometimes it's it's hard to get a ball python to eat and and you know if, if you actually feed a snake that's a really aggressive feeder i'd say you probably have a higher higher incidence of getting a feeding bite from a snake that is a really aggressive feeder as a matter of fact if you actually look at like my reticulated pythons especially like a young reticulated pythons those things are always crazy they're always in a crazed feeding mode and let me tell you when my big retic gets in a feeding mode it gets a little bit scary because he'll pretty much be in a feeding mode for like two weeks straight where you, you have to really work hard to snap him out of the feeding mode versus a ball python it's not really like that a lot of times they'll be not in a feeding Feeding mode probably 99% of the time every now and then you'll actually catch them in a feeding mode where, where they'll readily eat a lot of rodents and it seems like the hatchlings when they go through that transition from where they really start feeding really aggressively that is kind of the point where they get in that crazy feeding mode but I'd say in most cases with an adult ball python you don't really have to worry about that all right, so number seven, uh, it can hurt worse if you pull the snake off and tear your skin. So I've actually seen a lot of people do this where they'll get a ball python that latches on. And if you actually look at the teeth on the ball python, there's like rows of teeth on the top and the bottom of their mouth, and they're all curved inward. So if a ball python grabs you and you forcibly pull your finger out of the mouth of the ball python, potentially you could break a tooth on the ball python, which you really don't want to do because it could hurt the snake and potentially you could have a tooth inside of your skin and probably the, the thing that's going to hurt the most is if you actually pull your finger out of the mouth of the snake what's actually going to happen is you'll tear your skin and make a, a mild bite even worse by pulling away from the snake in the mouth so what i'd actually do is i do some other technique to try to get the snake to release sometimes you can actually just wait for a second or two sometimes they'll just automatically release and just kind of spit out your finger whatever they're actually grabbed onto most of the times if you get a feeding bite or something like that it really doesn't last very long all right so number eight this is what kind of surprised me when i first started taking a lot of really big bites you'll actually get more blood than you'll get pain which is kind of an interesting effect with ball python bites and since what it is is when a snake bites you it's almost like someone took a whole bunch of little needles and poked them all in your skin all in the same spot so in a lot of cases it's almost hard to put a bandage over your skin because it's like a whole bunch of tiny little pinprick 
pinpricks and you'll actually bleed a little bit from every little pinprick and it'll, it seemed like every time I took a bad bite I was like bleeding all over the place even though it didn't really hurt that bad which kind of surprised me when I started taking some really big bites from both of them. It took me a, a couple of years before I actually got my really first big bite from an adult ball python. It's not very often that you'll get bitten. All right, so number nine, it depends if the snake immediately lets go or hangs on. I've actually seen a lot of YouTube videos where they'll actually get bit by a snake and that snake will bite them and that snake will hang on for minutes, sometimes like five minutes. And let me tell you, if you get a snake that hangs on for that long, it, gets, it seems like it gets more and more painful the longer that snake is hanging on to you. And I'd say with ball pythons, that is pretty rare for a ball python to really hang on. Like, I've actually seen, uh, pretty much the longest I've seen is like a king snake or a rat snake like that. I've actually seen a lot of people where they get hit by a king snake and the king snake will hang on for so long it'll start trying to eat its their finger or something like that where you actually won't see that much of a feeding response from a ball python. But what I'd actually do is, uh, as a matter of fact, I actually have a video of, uh, I think it's like 12 different ways to get a biting snake to let go of you. You can try a whole bunch of different things. I'd say pretty much the number one thing that a lot of people use is uh, like a mint flavored mouthwash in a spray bottle. You can spray that on the snake and a lot of times they will immediately let go uh, and, they, and they won't hang on like they actually will in a lot of the feeding bites. All right, so number 10, it depends on the type of snake. So if you actually look at ball pythons, I'd say probably ball pythons uh, probably have the, the least painful bite of a lot of different snakes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually watched a lot of videos about green tree pythons. It's kind of the one that kind of stands out. A lot of people say the green tree pythons tend to have longer teeth than a lot of the other snakes. And the longer the teeth on the snake, the more it can penetrate your skin and the more that bite can hurt. And I'd say, if you actually look at the teeth of the ball python, they're not really that big and they don't really hurt that much. So if you're actually thinking about getting into ball pythons and kind of hesitant over the bites, I'd say, I'd say probably like 95% of all the bites that I've taken from my ball pythons here in my reptile room, most of them have been from hatchlings. And from the hatchlings, it almost feels like just a little tiny pinprick, almost nothing at all. As a matter of fact, if you're starting out, you'll probably have the, the fear factor versus the pain from the bite. And there's only one bite that I had that was really super bad from one of my ball pythons. I actually had an adult male a spider pied that I was feeding one day and it missed the rat and it grabbed me right between my thumb and my first finger and it grabbed me right in the web of my hand and it actually came all the way to the tub and wrapped completely around my arm and it hung on for, I think it hung on for like maybe about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, not that long, but enough to do pretty good damage to my thumb. And when I released it, I was like bleeding all over the place. It kind of surprised me that a, that a ball python would bite me like that and hang on because it's pretty unusual for a ball python. And the other thing that really surprised me is how much I was bleeding all over the place and that I really couldn't get a bandage over there. You almost have to take like some kind of like a cotton gauze and then wrap around some kind of a tape or something on those really big bites, which is kind of crazy. So that's pretty much it. That's my input as far as getting bit by a ball python. It's not really that bad. Once in a while, I'd say probably out of you know all these last six years, maybe I've had maybe two or three really bad bites where I was like, you know, bleeding all over the place and it hurt and didn't really hurt that bad, but you can definitely feel it. And let me tell you, compared to other snakes like reticulated pythons, if you get bit by a really big snake like that, it could definitely do some damage. As a matter of fact, with most reticulated pythons, people would say that a lot of times you have to go to the hospital and get stitches on some of those big snakes if you actually get bit really bad from like a reticulated python or something like that. And let me tell you, if you actually look at ball pythons, Pythons compared to a big snake like that, they are pretty much completely harmless and the, the bite from the ball python is not that painful. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.